uh -huh. but understanding how it got to be the physical for us has a lot to do with the history. There's so much overlap between two terms. Oh yeah, yeah. There's a lot of overlap. So you got the bhakti, you do the chanting, you got the karma, you do the action, the yana, yanas, like the wisdom. So you discern this is not me, this is not me, this is not me, mm -hmm. so that you find out what is. And many others. Tantric yoga. Tantric yoga would think it has to do with sex. Well, it had to do with controlling, controlling energy. And it had to do with merging with another to find higher states of consciousness. Uh. But tantric yoga was really anything that was on the, the, the edges of what people practiced as yoga in Hindu society. What happened is everything became diverse. They, there was a Buddhism was an was an offshoot of yoga okay. um, and was the Buddha uh, he was clearly a, a you know a, a strong yoga practitioner he was a, he was enlightened and yeah. he had he had a slightly different path and different philosophy but it was appealing and so this guy named Patanjali or Patanjali however you want to pronounce his name he, around 200 BC he said well we're in trouble yoga is becoming too diverse we need to consolidate it and he with, he didn't have anything original, but what he did is he took, he took ideas or concepts from all the different practices that existed since 7000 BC, consolidated them into something that he called classical yoga. And we refer to it as the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. And, well, that's not super important. Uh, the Yoga Sutras are threads or aphorisms. A sutra, like a sutra, is a thread mm. that, uh, that define a way of living or practice that will help you come to the higher state of consciousness by, by helping you identify and get rid of all of the noise other than what is true. So I'll give you the first three limbs and then we'll talk about stuff that's more relevant. Right. First limb is, is Atta Yoga Anushasanam, which means, and now commences the exposition of yoga. Many different uh, editors have had different explanations, but that's the most consistent. Now the exposition of yoga. The second is yoga is or uh, yogas chitta vritti nahroda, which means yoga is the cessation of mind stuff or the vortices in the mind. And then the last, the third is tara drastu swarupevastanam, which means when the cessation has been achieved, then will rest, then the seer emerges the seer will emerge or the authentic self emerges mm -hmm. and so in layman's terms or to make it more simple now we're going to do yoga mm -hmm. yoga is a reduction of the noise other than that which is pure and when that occurs the seer emerges it applies to everything everything in life so whenever you're doing something you sit down to read a book now the practice of my reading the book the reading a book occurs when I stop thinking of everything but my reading the book when I am reading the book and those things occur, then I am the book, for the most part. I am the bowl of cereal I'm eating. It, yes, if you can do it, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but we think about things. We think, our mind's always going, oh, mm, what's going to happen today? We don't even know we're eating this cereal. What's going to happen yeah. tomorrow? And, and why, why do I feel this way? And why do I feel that way? And blah, 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 blah. I just find such a... Because I, I, I've practiced some meditation over the past few years. And, you know, just little simple things like turning the TV off in the morning. Um, while I have a bowl of cereal, rather, you know, because everyone turns the TV on or hops online or whatever and they, while they eat. Uh, and if, if, if I turned everything off and I just ate, and just, just, just ate, I found a certain contentness and, 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 and freshness to just that simple, uh, you know, uh, mindless activity or was mindless, you know, now there mindless. can be some mindfulness to it. And you might think, well, that's boring, but the real benefit to that to me was that, um, you know, it made walking down the street to class uh, a pleasure, you know. It made simple things a pleasure. Everything was fresh. Everything was was an experience, you know. And I didn't have to go searching for some sort of stimulation, like you know, drowning in an iPod, you know, of music to be just distracted and withdrawn. And you know, I wasn't, um, you know, I was more present. I was there to say hi to people. I was there to notice, you know, the things on my walks. You know, I, I just woke you up a little bit. I just think that's, you know, that's how you wake up to life. Absolutely, and, and the yogis would say that, that actually, that when you do eat your breakfast or any meal like that, that you receive more nutrition, that you are better able to assimilate what you're eating, ah. because you are focused on it. Ah. They, they believe ah. very strongly that whatever... Are there whatever, studies about that? Probably. <laughs> I would suspect there are somewhere. Yeah. You know, in India, I'm sure there are. I don't know if yeah. they're scientific by our definition, but... Huh. 
And interestingly also they would say, well, isn't it strange that we, when we're in our teenage or formative years and, you know, adolescence things are really strange and crazy, we go to a dark place at night and get drunk to meet somebody in a very loud environment. I like a club. Mm -hmm. What is a club? A club is a place that's dark, people are drunk, and it's so loud you can't hear yourself or anybody else think. But that's where we go to, that's where we go to mate or to, you know, I mean, think yeah, about it. Yeah. We have all that stuff between us and the experience because that's what we need to be able to be okay with it. Yeah, I've always had a hard time understanding that personally, but uh, it is the behavior of, you know, it's, it's, it's what's portrayed, it's what's practiced by, I don't know, mainstream, I guess. Mainstream America, yeah. yeah. We like it. And so, how this all, how this works, how this converts into yoga has got, it has to do with the, uh, they say that there is, the, the sutras have four chapters. First chapter is kind of like the marketing. It says, well, if you do these things we say, then good things will happen, and they tell you those good things. The second chapter has to do with uh, what you need to do to get there. Third chapter is all the magic stuff that supposedly happens, and I'll talk to you a teeny bit about that just because it's interesting. And the last chapter is kind of like, well, you think you had it, Mm. Maybe not. It's a little harder than you thought. But the second chapter is what we, what we most focus on here in America. And the second chapter says there are eight limbs or eight things that you got to do to achieve the higher states of consciousness. The yogis would say that you don't stop drinking coffee by saying I'm going to stop drinking coffee. They would say that that's putting more energy towards that act, making it harder to extinguish. Mm. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. uh, they would say you, you move your energy towards something else. The postures are, would be that something else. Oh, so instead of making a mental note to yourself, you know, when I'm, you know, a New Year's resolution, or and when I turn 30, I'm going to quit smoking, or, you know, I'm going to eat right, or, yeah. you know, whatever it might be that you're not happy about, uh, that it can be counterproductive to do that, because you're putting energy toward um, the quitting. You're and, putting and, energy, and you're meditating on it. If I concentrate and contemplate on anything, the yogis would say that that's what you merge with. So if I want to well, quit... Putting energy toward quitting sounds like a good thing. Except that the act, the energy towards the, towards the object that you're trying to stop is the problem. Okay. Let's say you have an injury. Yeah. And you just focus, oh, my wrist, my wrist, my wrist. That uh, injury doesn't tend to get better. I hear you. You know, and so you have to move your energy away from it. If, you're really, if you have people that have a very hard time smoking, they keep quitting and trying and can't do it and blah, 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 blah. They are putting so much energy into it hmm. that it has power. Hmm. They give it power. The hmm. yogis would say, move the power away. Move the power away from it. They would say, don't. This one uh, famous yogi, uh, Yogananda, Paramahansa Yogananda, said, he said, what you must do to change your behavior is, the, is something else in place of it. Hmm. And for us, we would think, oh, well, you know, I don't drink coffee, I'll drink espresso, or I don't yeah, drink coffee, yeah. or I'll have a... But no, he would say that what you do is you replace it with an action, mm -hmm. one that's more healthy, and or yoga. That's very Western too. Oh yeah, you yeah. Replace one habit with another. You know, yeah, yeah. That's just but he would say he would say that the, the the that when you separate, there's a concept called tapas. When you can extinguish a behavior, even by substituting it for something that's more healthy, you 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 get more strength to change behaviors and patterns. Mm -hmm. Hmm. You say that there's strength in the, when you can separate from the habit, yeah. that you have more strength is, and your spirit grows. Your spirit has more power. You become more actualized, actually, because you're not constrained by that that you are attached to. That's another incentive to quit your bad habit. You can yeah, become yeah. more actualized. Yeah, it's just trickier than we like to believe to quit the habit, right? Well, we're so, com I mean, I, the mind is an obsessive tool and, you know, it, it makes simple tasks so hard sometimes. Oh yeah. Uh, the interesting thing, and this is what this is probably what everything I've said is led up to, is that the eight limbs are what the third third limb. The first two limbs are like the Ten Commandments, but they would say, and you can edit this out if you want to. But they would say, you know, one of those limbs is brahmacharya, which means uh, sexual abstinence, chastity. But what the yogis say is that that is a byproduct of the practice of yoga, not something to be practiced to, to become more yogic. They would mm -hmm. say that if you practice it to be more yogic, that what will happen is it will do the exact opposite. 